The area where most of the tension takes place in the head is from the chin down to the clavicle. Uh, you notice a great many singers when they sing, the cords are sticking out on the neck and the veins are sticking out and so forth. Well, when you see this happen, you can rest assured that before very long that singer is going to get into trouble vocally because the use of muscles, muscles or an overuse of muscles in this area affects the vocal cords. The vocal cords are situated directly under your chin in an enclosure called the larynx or the voice box. And when this tension appears in the neck area, because the vocal cords are directly under your chin or right in the middle of all that tension, that tension is transferred to the larynx or the voice box and consequently to the vocal cords themselves. And because of this tension being transferred to the vocal cords, the vocal cords become over tense and they have a tendency to vibrate more forcibly together than they should when you are creating sound, particularly on the higher part of the voice. Okay? Because of this overtension on the vocal cords and the fact that they are vibrating more forcibly, over a period of time, the vocal cords start to swell on their inner edges. Now, something happens to the range of your voice when your vocal cords swell. The vocal cords have to vib vibrate very quickly to produce a high-pitched sound. Now, if you have a swelling on those vocal cords, the vocal cords cannot vibrate fast enough to produce that high-pitched sound correctly. But you're a professional singer. You have to walk out onto that stage tonight and you have to perform, I don't know how many songs, we'll say maybe 20 high notes in those songs. And because there are high notes in those songs, you have to sing them. They're in the song. Your vocal cords have swollen. They won't create the uh, high notes correctly, but you still have to sing them. So you have to force your voice, push, yell, scream, whatever way you can get those high notes to, uh, to appear, you have to use. Now, because of the fact that you're forcing your vocal cords when they are not healthy to produce that high-pitched sound means that over a period of time, your own body sort of sets up a defense mechanism against the abuse you're giving your vocal cords and little things called nodes appear on your vocal cords, on the inner edges. These nodes are like tiny pimples and they inhibit your vocal cords from vibrating correctly. And as a result of that, you wind up losing probably the top of your voice and the bottom of your voice and you wind up with a speaking range of your voice in the middle. Okay? Now nodes only appear because of incorrect vocal production. Housewives can get them from yelling at, the ch at their children. You can get nodes over a period of time if you uh, go to too many football games and yell for your favorite team. The point is that you don't need these nodes and there's no sense in getting them in the first place. Now, the only way we're going to forestall getting nodes on the vocal cords is if we learn to relax the neck muscles when we sing. Now, a great many singers, uh, there are quite a number in the pop field and uh, possibly in the classical field, have wound up with nodes on their vocal cords. Now, uh, they have had the nodes taken off surgically by a, a, a doctor, but the point is that if you don't learn how to relax the throat muscles, those nodes will appear again on the vocal cords. So we have to find some way of relaxing the neck muscles to take away that extra strain from the vocal cords to allow them to vibrate freely and effortlessly to create your sound. And in order to do that, we involve something which you would normally do if you were tired or relaxed. We involve the act of yawning. The yawning act is the most relaxing thing you can do as far as your throat is concerned. So we want to try to get the act of yawning involved in the act of singing. Okay. Now, if we looked inside your, the back of your throat and your mouth, uh, we would notice a certain physical thing happening. You have, I have, everyone has uh, a, a protuberance hanging down in the back of the throat like a small tongue, which is called the uvula. And this uvula, by the way, is there so it folds up over the windpipe uh, or the nasal passage, stopping food going up into your sinus cavities. That's neither here nor there. But when you yawn, your uvula lifts up toward the entrance to the nasal passage. When you yawn, you always have the feeling that you have twice as much uh, space in your throat 
uh, than usual. In other words, because you do. The fosses or pillars of the throat when you yawn stretch upwards and outwards, giving you the impression, rightly so, that you have a lot more space in the back of your throat than you do ordinarily. Now, outwardly, when you yawn, your cheeks lift up towards your eyes and you open up your mouth wide. You go, and your cheeks lift up. Now, we're going to lift the cheeks up in the act of singing, but we're not going to open up the mouth wide. Okay? Now, we want to lift the cheeks. The easiest way to lift your cheeks is to look pleasant. One of the rules of bel canto singing by Mar uh, Marchese was, sing as if you were singing with a slight smile on your face. Okay? And the easiest way to lift your cheeks is to look pleasant. You might as well look good while you're singing, appear appearance-wise, as well as vocally. Okay? Now, you're going to lift the cheeks up and you're going to try to get the uvula up in the back, okay? And that gives you a feeling of openness. And if you do that, you feel like you want to yawn, okay? Now, one of the ways that I have of, of uh, having students or singers lift the, uh, their, their uvula is while lifting their cheeks into a nice pleasant expression, try to physically move your back upper teeth apart. Now, you know that your teeth don't move, at least they shouldn't, and uh, you try to physically move your teeth apart, like that, as if you were, your, your teeth are like a horseshoe. The, the front of the teeth here and the, and the teeth are open at the back, and you're going to try and spread the teeth apart physically. They don't move, but you're going to try to make them move. And if you spread your back upper teeth and lift your cheeks at the same time and go, and then you breathe in immediately, you'll want to yawn, okay? Now, this act of lifting the throat is what is known in singing as singing with an open throat. An open throat is a relaxed throat, okay? Now, we have to get the yawn in the throat so that your throat is always in the position it would be in if it was singing a perfect aw all the time. In other words, once you learn to spread your teeth, lift, get the uvula up and lift your cheeks, that position in the back of the throat never changes. It's static. It's there all the time you sing. Okay? So by doing that, what we're actually doing is we're transferring the tension which might be put here under the throat in the neck which affects the vocal cords. We're taking the tension from here and we're putting it up on the level of your cheekbones or your earlobes. We're putting it up in the back upper portion of the roof of the mouth. We're taking it away from the vocal cords. We're allowing the vocal cords, because of the uh, uh, elimination of that tension, to vibrate freely without any excess weight on the, on the vocal cords, which of course in turn uh, causes the vocal cords to swell, nodes appear, and you wind up with vocal problems. Now, Lamperti, one of the great teachers of the bel canto technique at the turn of the century, uh, advised his pupils not to unnecessarily disturb the jaw during the act of singing because it disturbed the diction and disturbed the line of the voice. By the line of the voice, he meant the sameness of quality from the bottom of the voice to the top of the voice. Uh, there's an old misconception in singing that you have to, in order to relax the chin and the throat muscles, drop the jaw and open the mouth wide. Uh, they say, open up your mouth wide to let the sound out. Well, the sound comes out of your head in sound waves and so forth. This dropping of the jaw and opening up the mouth is actually one of the worst things you can do in singing because it puts tension in your neck. Madonna, I want you to open up your mouth wide and tell me where you feel tension. Right. Under your chin, right there, you see. As soon as you drop your jaw, and open up your mouth, you put tension in the neck muscles. You don't take tension out of the neck muscles, okay? Now, if you're going to lift your cheeks, lift your throat, keep it in that same position all the time. This means that you're not going to be able to mouth your words as much as you see some singers do. In other words, they make pear-shaped tones and they're forming the vowel sounds with their mouth. They're going O, A, O, E, so forth. Uh, as soon as you make an O with your mouth, what happens? Your cheeks drop, your uvula drops, now you've lost that open-throated position. Singing is only an extension of the act of talking. 
It is only glorified speech or speaking in rhythm, and there is no reason whatsoever that you should have to mouth your words when you sing if you don't do that when you speak. Now, Madonna, you're watching me speak to you right now. The only reason why my lips have to close or touch is to create six consonant sounds, a B, an F, a P, an M, a W, and a V. The other consonants are created by the tip of the tongue and the teeth, but when I speak or you speak or anyone speaks, the vowel sounds are created by the tongue. You don't say, I am going home, do you? You say, I am going home. And you notice I said at that time, my mouth didn't go into a shape of an O. In other words, you're going to treat the act of singing as naturally as the act of talking. By keeping the cheeks up, letting the tongue create the vowel sounds, you are going to be able to keep the throat up and sing all the sounds with an open throat. Now, the important thing is that you are going to treat the act of singing as naturally as the act of talking.